Hey guys, now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new, just announced, Elgoo Saturn 4 Ultra. This is a resin printer that has fantastic quality and is super fast to print. You can create fantastic models like this. We're going to take a look at the specs, we're going to see it in action, and we'll see why you'll want to pick up this guy if you're looking for miniatures or even larger prints like this and doing it fast and at high quality. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now the Saturn IV Ultra has a build volume of 218 by 122 by 220. It has a print speed of 150 millimeters and it also has an accuracy of 0.02. Now the XY resolution of this resin printer is 11520 by 5120. It's gonna give you some really high detailed prints and you're gonna see the way these prints came out. Um, it does use Chitu box and it actually comes with a beginner version I would call it not the pro version or the paid version but it does come with Chitu box and what I really love about this and I've been looking at and reviewing and using resin printers for a very long time the most frustrating part about getting any kind of printer functional is getting through the process of getting your builds to stick and then obviously tuning it well out of the box my very first print worked immediately and every print after has stuck and is fantastic in quality. I call that a win. It also has Wi-Fi capabilities. Time lapse, because it has an onboard AI camera, which is something I really love. Something that I don't have on my other resin printers. So being able to take a peek of what's going on and also monitor it and even record it is super cool. It also has network connectivity, which is gonna give you again that network monitoring of your prints. It has a hinge-based hood, which I absolutely love because I'm really used to taking my print uh, hood off and then going in to do some work and then having to put it on. And it's unavoidable. You're gonna get resin on the hood. And I have so many hoods that have like uh, fingerprints that are kind of stuck to it because the actual uh, resin can melt the hood itself depending on the material that you're working with. So having the hood model, Super cool for keeping it clean and then also having it tucked out of the way. Uh, we did three prints, right? First, we did a Rook, uh, which is an onboard model that Elgu provided, and that was an hour and 48 minutes. The Dragon that you're going to see, uh, which is this one right here, we'll take a closer look at it in a couple seconds, was five hours and 34 minutes. Now, the Predator that we're looking at here, this guy right here, this guy was three hours and 36 minutes, right? So... Overall, I thought that the print speeds were great and the quality, as you'll see in a second, is pretty spectacular. Now, one of the things that I found is lacking that I really wish uh, Elgu had added was uh, an onboard carbon filter, some type of filtration, because depending on the materials that you're gonna be using, and in this case, we ran this right here. So we were running the ABS like 2.0 polymer resin, right, from Elgu. And the challenge is, is that when you're doing anything with resin um, of this type, it could smell and um, you know, different resin types have different odors. So uh, it's something that you smell and it's not something that you uh, cannot smell if the hood is down. There's still some, um, I would say, odor coming out of it, especially if you're doing a print. If you have the prints, um, I would say, or the resin just in the actual printer and you're not running a print, uh, there's really no notice of smell. But once things start going, you do smell it. And I think it's primarily because of this resin type that we're using right here. Uh, so I haven't seen that with some of the other ones that I've used. So that's one of the things I would really like to see. Uh, the other thing I would say is that I think that the slicer software worked really well. Uh, I would say that the profile that I had just worked out of the box, which I mentioned I loved. And overall, our print quality has been superb, and we really enjoy this printer. Let me show you the prints, and then we'll take a closer look at the printer itself. Now, the first print that we ran was this Rook. And you can see uh, the quality of this is, is great. This first layer, notice how clean this first layer is. It really sticks to the build plate really, really nice. I'm wearing gloves because every now and then I don't leave it in the curing station long enough. And I just want to make sure that I don't get anything toxic on my hands as I'm showing you the product. But overall, we'll get a little bit closer here so you can see. That's a pretty clean first layer. And then as you look at everything else that's going on right here, you can see uh, the staircase inside of it is pretty clean. It's just, it's a great print. Uh, I wanted to add it something a little bit more challenging that had more detail. And that's where this dragon came in. And this is a spectacular print too. You'll see this was again, uh, pre-supported, ran it, nothing failed. Uh, 
just just great overall experience with the print and you saw the time right there and you can see we'll get this a little bit closer you can see the kind of detail that we got out of this really really nice detail love the look of it uh, the next step for me is to prime this up and once i've primed it we're set to go you can see that the print itself is hollow and some of the there's it'll some supports even still left inside but this was really great the other one that we printed, because I wanted to challenge it even further, was this bust right here. And this is a Predator bust, and you can see uh, how great this one looks right here. And we'll bring it up a little bit closer so you guys can see that. Look at that. That looks nice. You can see the dreadlocks, all the detail there. Look at the crown. This just looks so, so good. Right? So uh, really digging the overall quality. And then again, as we test, this was also with supports. You can see the support area here, how clean it is. So there's nothing here that was connected. There's nothing here. There's no pits, no dimples. Everything looks just really nice. And it's really, really ready to prime. Uh, this is the base right here that we did. And you can notice here again, um, I may have overcooked this a little bit when I was uh, uh, kind of like curing it, but you can see overall, the quality itself. And if I were to put this together, this is what it's gonna look like, right? All together. So we'll go ahead and bring this up so you guys can see this. So, you know, we're talking about that right there. You know, pretty pretty great quality, right? You can see that, the detail. And something that, oops, something that you'll be able to really enjoy. Uh, the material is very durable. You notice nothing even broke, even though there are a lot of different areas here that uh, required support or in the air, like the facial uh, teeth that you see here. And a lot of it is, is somewhat pointy too. But all in all, our experience has been superb out of the box. Now, the first standout feature of the Saturn IV is going to be the hood. And we'll take a look at, now we'll take a look at all the, now, the first standout feature of the Saturn IV is going to be the hood, and I really, really love this implementation. I love the fact that there's nothing to lift, and as I mentioned in my intro, I always found myself either damaging them, you know, getting resin on the hood, and this really makes it effortless when it comes to removing prints. Uh, other thing that you'll notice is that the build plate design is a little bit different. We'll take this off in a couple seconds, but this model, the actual resin tray goes up and down, um, as the uh, print is taking place. So you have two actions going on, this going up and down, and then this moving upward slowly as the print is being created. Now I do have in the back my own carbon filter from one of my old printers because I just wanted to keep kind of like the smell of the ABS uh, really at bay. And this is the kind of resin that we're using for those of you who um, are interested. Let me get this in focus for you. Uh, this is what we have here. So this is the ABS Slide 2.0. And you saw that in the video as well. Now, other aspects that I would say that are pretty unique or the things that I really like about this uh, printer is how easy it is to remove the bill plate. So all you do is flip this lever up like this, and then the bill plate is gonna come out really easily. Now, one of the things that I wish, it seems to be a problem with all printers, and that is the resin that gets left here. I wish that was something that Maybe there was some perforation so that there would be nothing left because as this is done, it would be great if it drained itself. But in this case, you'll notice that resin will immediately start to drip. So let me wipe this down. Now, I wanted to give you a view of what the bottom looks like. I really like that uh, design that you have there on the bottom. But I also find that this, uh, again, this bed here does a really nice job of adhering um, any of my prints. So it's actually sometimes a little bit too hard to take off. And I want to make sure I don't scratch this. So I'm ultra careful as I'm just prying things off. Now the tray does have two knobs as you would expect with every uh, resin printer. It does have a max fill line as well that you want to make sure that you don't go above. Um, you can see there in the corner also the AI camera which allows you also to monitor what's going on and as I mentioned I went ahead and added my own um, carbon filter there. Uh, it definitely doesn't last the entire print but it's enough to help with the smell that I was getting out of the printer. Uh, pretty much very very clean inside and very very quiet. Now, I really like the implementation of this menuing system and the screen itself. We'll go ahead and lower the actual hood so that we can keep the actual resin smell at bay. I'll go ahead and hit continue or confirm right there. And just want to show you what's going on here in the menu. We'll go to the very beginning. So you have, if I want to be able to print something, choose print, local file, 
You can also then go from memory. I don't have the USB stick connected, but that's something that you can choose. You can also look at your history. And this is gonna show the prints that I had uh, printed previously. Now, you can tap on either of those prints and see all the details about the print. And then uh, you could also reprint it if that's something that you'd like to do. You also can go into the settings area. In the setting area, you're gonna find language settings. You're gonna find also you know, various app settings, print modes. Uh, you also then have servicing uh, information. You can go through the upgrades. I did do an over-the-air upgrade as soon as the printer uh, was unboxed. So there was a firmware upgrade that took place. Did that, it was completely uneventful and it worked well. Now under tools, you have a couple things you can work with. You can either move uh, the build plate up or down. You can also do a screen exposure. You do a tank cleaning exercise, which is pretty nice that it has that built in. And then you have your emergency uh, stop. Over here, you also then have a device self-check. The last menu is device uh, info, and you'll find your serial number, your MAC address, as well as your IP address there, as well as your firmware version. On the side here, you'll notice that you have your Wi-Fi antenna, you do have a USB port, power uh, switch, and then also the power plug. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.